started my career as a lawyer in Miami, Florida, where I worked in the prosecutor's office starting in 1977. And in my progression through that office, I had the most remarkable experience in the juvenile court. The one thing that stuck with me was what a remarkable difference we could make if we did the work in the family court and the juvenile court in the most effective way possible. There was an awareness built when the act was authorized around the need to treat kids as kids. You know, that the idea that they should be not put into adult jails, that they should be kept separated from adult offenders, that we should be thinking twice before locking up a kid who's running away, more than likely, likely running away from something rather than to something. Uh, later to come into the act around the issues around uh, disproportionate minority confinement, now contact. I, I think these were reminders to us that there was a, oh, an overarching set of values and principles that we needed to pay attention to. I think one of the reasons why kids who are involved in multiple systems don't have their needs met is because these systems are siloed. That education figures, well, I've got my mission, I've got my task, that's my job, I'll do it. And mental health says, well, I, I deal with the kids who have presented to me of mental health issues. Juvenile justice deals with delinquents. Child welfare deals with kids who have been maltreated. But yet the kids who are known to these individual systems often are known to multiple systems at the same time. And because we silo our work and we don't open that collaborative door to how we work well together as the collaborative entity, we, we miss out on the opportunity to be more effective in how we work with kids, how we create more coherence and more synergy around the work we do with these kids and their families. I think the Juvenile Justice and Delinquency Prevention Act matters because as a document, as an act, it reminds us that children are children and that we should not be treating them as adults, that we should not be treating them as many adults, that we need to understand the developmental needs that they have and the special approaches that we need to take in working with them that locking a child up in an adult facility and not keeping them separate from adult offenders and locking up kids who are misbehaving as runaways or truants and not paying special attention to the, to the disparate treatment that kids of color receive in this country, those are all things that the Act help us address. So for me, we see the Act reauthorized, it recommits us, it's a restatement of our commitment to those issues and those values by which we should be raising our own children and the communities should be paying respect for every child who lives within their community and their jurisdiction. Those kids need our protection, they need our support, they need our nurturing, not our condemnation and not our indignation.